Film lighting can be pretty intimidating, especially if you're the one making the calls. If you find yourself feeling lost sometimes, you've come to the right place. What's up Alpha Universe, Jock Rafford here with another exciting tutorial. This video is the second of a five part series with an emphasis on advanced filmmaking and how to take your video work to the next level. So far I've covered the cinematic elements in filmmaking and in this video we'll take a look at lighting. Now I'm not going to discuss every single lighting technique in the book. Instead I'm going to focus on a few elements I consider when lighting a scene. First we've got the quality of light. In other words, hard light and soft light. In most cases, your goal should be to obtain soft light unless you want to create a specific effect with hard shadows. The main attributes of a soft light is blurry shadows with a smoother roll off. With a hard light, you're getting sharp and defined shadows. Before I discuss how soft light is achieved, it's important to note that in essence, diffusing your light doesn't guarantee softer shadows although the way you diffuse might. Let me explain. Here, we've got a light source without diffusion. And as you can see, the shadows are sharp and defined. In other words, hard light. One would think that if I add a layer of diffusion to the light and bring down the brightness, I would get softer shadows. Wrong. Even if I dial down the exposure on the light with a layer of diffusion, I'm still getting the same definition in the shadows. There are three factors that define hard and soft light. The size of your light, the size of your subject, and the distance they are from each other. In this example, we start with a small light source and a good distance away from our subject. Ignoring the harshness of the light without the fusion, it's the shadows that give it away. As long as your light source is smaller than your subject, you'll get hard and defined shadows. When adding a softbox to your light, it's not necessarily the layer of the fusion that gives you a softer light, but the fact that the softbox enlarges your light. If your light is too far from your subject, you will still get hard shadows. Consider the sun. Even though it's the biggest light source one can ask for, the sheer distance makes it a tiny in relation to the earth, which is why you get hard shadows on a sunny day. On an overcast day, the clouds are acting like a softbox, diffusing, bouncing, and spreading the sun's light more evenly over the sky. And this is why you get better exposures, because in essence, the source has been enlarged. When we take the larger light source and bring it closer to our subject, we'll get more pleasing shadows because in relation to our subject, the light has become even larger. One of my favorite ways to light is to use double diffusion. In this case, using a scrim as a second layer not only creates a larger light source, but also spreads the light more evenly, allowing the light to wrap around the face, giving soft and pleasing shadows. A large light source combined with layers of diffusion will give you soft shadows and a better dynamic range, one of the elements I mentioned in my previous tutorial. When you compare the three, it's evident that in most cases, soft light will be the winner. The second element to consider when lighting is motivation. Light motivation is the most important element that will make your scenes feel more realistic and it's all about how the viewer interprets your light source. The goal of lighting any scene is to do it in such a way that the viewer is not aware of the fact that you lit the scene. Because the moment that happens, your image becomes saucy. Saucy light screams out to your audience that you're using a light source not natural to the scene. And lighting motivation rests on a premise of using existing light in the scene, light that makes sense to the viewer, and then motivating it with your light source in a way that the viewer will think your light is coming from the existing source. Before you light your scene, you have to ask yourself, where is the light already coming from naturally, before doing anything? Using these sources as motivation will help you determine where to place your lights in order to enhance the already existing light, which will make your scenes feel more natural. So let's take the element of soft light, diffusion and motivation and put it into practice. We'll start with motivation. Considering this is a night scene, our light source is the lamp. The lamp is also referred to as a practical. A practical is any artificial light that is visible in your frame. The problem is that a practical doesn't give off the desired look by itself, and that's why we need to motivate it. If we want to motivate the lamp, we need to make sure that our light source is the same temperature as the lamp, 
and that's why I'm using a tungsten gel, since the lamp is using a tungsten globe. In this case, I'm setting up a book light. A book light is one of the most popular ways to light a high contrast scene, because of the way the light wraps around into the shadows. It consists of using a reflector to bounce light through a scrim at a 45 degree angle, creating really soft shadows. You can still light with a single softbox, although adding an additional grid will most likely give you a smoother image with less light spill. And this is the biggest challenge of using a book light, eliminating light spill. By using flags, I'm cutting off light to areas in the image that cancels out the reach of the lamp. As I move it over, you can clearly see the difference it makes. A book light usually requires about two to three flags, more often at least one large one. Looking at the before and after, you can see how the light is motivating the lamp, but still retaining the natural reach of the lamp. Next, I'll add an extra light source coming from the outside to emulate moonlight or perhaps a street lamp. I'm putting on a blue gel to create some color contrast. By using different temperature lights, you're adding more depth to your scenes. Color contrast is one of the best ways to make your scenes feel more dynamic, but more about this later. First, let's add some haze. Using a hazer for indoor scenes can add serious production value to your projects. And lately, I don't even want to shoot a scene without one. Haze accentuates your light beams and adds depth to your scenes, making your footage look less digital. If you look at the before and after, you can clearly see how the haze motivates the light coming from the lamp and gives an overall softer image with less distractions. The trick is to know how much haze to use and to make sure it's spread evenly throughout the room, allowing it to settle for a bit and then making sure nothing can get out. To add some more color contrast to the image, I'm emulating a television screen. My Godox R1 has a TV feature that changes exposure every few seconds. But being such a small light means I have to enlarge it about the size of a TV to give off natural shadows, and a softbox does the job here. The moment you go in for a close-up angle, you can bring your entire book light closer and dialing down the intensity will give you even more pleasing roll-off in the shadows on the face. Looking back, you can see how combining a few elements will make your scenes feel more realistic. First, we motivated the light from the lamp with a soft light. With some color contrast and added haze, the scene feels more realistic without drawing attention to the lights. So if you want to improve your lighting game, you have to ask yourself, how will I improve the quality of light? How can I motivate the light in scene, whether it's coming from a natural source or from practicals? Lastly, I want to talk about backlighting. Backlighting is excessively used in cinema and commercials because of the amazing depth you get and the way it separates your subjects from the background. With backlighting, you can take a relatively boring scene and transform it into something interesting. Whether you use the sun as your source or if you're motivating an alternative source, backlighting is bound to improve the look and feel of your films. And I always consider this with model placement. It doesn't mean that every shot has to be backlit, but it sure adds a lot of cinematic value. The only thing you have to decide is how will you fill in the shadow side and if you want to fill it in at all. So there you have it. Taking these elements into consideration will most certainly make your future projects look and feel more cinematic. Thanks for watching part 2 of the series. See you in the next one.